drill in class we call pass, sweep, submit, but it's sort of just working on guard specific stuff. And I was rolling with a um, friend of mine and he, he's longer, he, he's a real tall guy. And I get um, sort of one track minded, I get dead set on sweeping him. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's he aware of my sweep game. Okay. Right? I like to play a lot of butterfly guard and do that. And then it becomes like a, I'm gonna make this work, I, mm -hmm. and, and he's like, I'm gonna shut it down, and, and we we yeah. butt heads for a long time. And the other day, as we were in the middle of it, I'm like, Why am I not trying yeah. to submit him? Why am I not trying to hide these things in there? And I realized it was a um, just sort of a a clash of wills. But when I started adding the submissions back in, it instantly opened things back up mm -hmm. and created new possibilities, and it got me excited to. Um, sort of pick your brain about it. any potential ways that you could blend those things where you could hide a sweep behind a submission or a submission behind a sweep specifically when you're playing guard and if you have anything that works for you there. Yeah. I, um, there's one, I think this would be maybe a good warm-up mm -hmm. and then we can, we can kind of branch off, but setting up... Uh, setting up a sweep from a submission or the threat of a submission and then off the sweep going right back into it uh, the sweeps and chokes are closely related um also i think arm locks and and sweeps because you're taking away a post mm. with with the threat um I, th I think we can go down a couple of different roads here okay could you show me that position first that you sure. and your you and your buddy can get into so tend to get into this butterfly guard. He's uh, real long and tall and he's um, pretty strong and so he'll pop my guard open pretty easy. Uh -huh. So I'll just you know, sort of back out and scoot and then I'll get into here and then, um, you know, I, I like all these butterfly sort of options. Mm -hmm. I'm playing mm -hmm. a lot of butterfly, but he likes to pin these feet and um, and gets back, uses his head and we're, we're, we're fighting for head position and we spend an exorbitant amount of time sort of jockeying for little little teeny advantages in this position mm -hmm. um, and so what what is what has helped is 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 me going you know trying to go back into a guard and pull him back down and start trying to apply something so that he has to commit an arm to defend and then I can isolate that arm and then take away that post and try to sweep yeah but so let's do kind of uh, with a very very deep grip in the collar um, let's go into our, our butterfly guard sweep. However you want that, you can have one foot in, you can have the other one out. You know, we're we're here, and I want you to immediately follow it with a with a knee cut. Mm. All right. So we're using like we're setting it up, and then we're using gravity to kind of accelerate that knee past. And and this setup, you know, we're we're in here. We're do, we're doing we're doing whatever it takes. We come, um, typically the guy, now of course you can, you can move over and, and extend, extend the leg and go arm lock, but coming off the sweep, most people um, kind of turn into you and that's a, it's a good opportunity then, boom, and now we're here into that. And then, and then I'd, I'd like to expand on this a little bit more, um, you can suspend the person as you're attacking for the choke. And there's a couple different positions you can get it. But this is a great time. The guy comes up and then we're suspending him. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's in that limbo. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's different ways you can do that. You can do it with like a sleeve choke and you're blocking the leg and they, they want to step over. You can do it with, um, you can do it with some other positions where you're extending him out kind of X style. Mm -hmm. But I think um, being able to feed that choke and it's not as obvious because they're thinking about how they lost the position. So just going into that and also just the arc of it. You know, I'm here, I come through, boom, we're, we're there. And if you, if you can't get, if he blocks that arm, then I'm coming back and yet suspending you. And I think that suspension is where it's really at. Yeah. Really deep grip. Don't be afraid here because you're going to use that later. You know, go ahead and get your angle and then cut to the inside like that. Floating. Grip on top. 
circle that around so you're blocking immediately. Yeah, you can put that, you can put it in. Sure, he blocks my elbow. Very, very common. Okay, now I'm gonna give up position and then suspend him with that hook. And then you're gonna try to hold on to my foot a little bit too. Cause that, that's pretty realistic. Like, and now don't fall too far out here. Okay. You, you kind of want to sucker him with a straight leg mm -hmm. and get very, very close. It feels better staying tight like that. That looks good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he feels like he's getting, like it's more achievable mm -hmm. to be able to come. So I'm really no, here, baby. Yeah, the lift keeps them in that limbo where they're not quite sure what to do. Um, and you're gonna get blocked on that. Yeah. But that constant threat, you're threatening from the guard, you sweep them, oh, you're going over. Okay. At this point, do, do you like to come up? I, I, yeah, I'm, cu I'm cutting a strong angle. Maybe my hip's even on him. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Ooh, that one, that was a good one. Look mm -hmm. how close that leg is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tight, yep. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Something about how close you are mm -hmm. that really brings that choke it, on it, you. It, it, it gets my arm in closer, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah, cool. And that that idea of like, I'm giving up a little bit of position as a bait mm -hmm. for him. It, it, that really helps. Um, one, another way you can get, let's just expand on that concept a little sure. bit. So with the sleeve choke, like from the guard, if you're playing butterfly, this is always worth checking. And that, you know, I fought some really tough brown belt and he, had, he didn't even know what this choke was. He thought it was an Ezekiel, right? Mm -hmm. So most guys, uh, they, they want to um, like get over this leg so that they can get into a better position. So when they step up, I want to, I want to block that. Mm. I want to block that. Uh, my first uh, BJJ teacher, Claudio Franza, he, he choked a guy out in like, it was Pan Ams and he choked a guy out almost immediately. I mean, within under 30 seconds because he got, again, medium grip here. Okay. All right. So we're in, we, we have it and, and we, want to, we want to suspend him. We're blocking that. And sometimes they, they even do like a little, uh, 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 and that, in that time, you know, yeah, it's, it's precious seconds mm. that, that they are not knocking that elbow off to get into it. So let's do it one more time. And just, and all you gotta do is just like any other sweep, we're aiming for that, um, yeah, right there, right there. And just block him and keep him in that limbo. It's not quite suspending him up, but it's still blocking them where they feel like they have a little bit of a chance. You can't do that. Oh, so that's great. Yeah, you want to have your... Yeah, come bring this out just a little bit more horizontal for him. And do you keep this underneath or do you shoot this out around? Um, Typically, it's going to be around. Around, yeah. Yeah, because then you, you want to go to like a triangle position. Um, and sometimes you have like that, 
that foot on the hip, the left foot on the hip, so it can slip off. Mm, yeah, it makes more sense. Yeah, you might need to get a little bit more of an angle, and and it's okay to move your hips back as well. Particularly here, here let me get into this. Like with the, like if we're here in a butterfly, if we're here in a butterfly, you might want to, you really have to get him bent over like that. Like that. Then if he, it, like if, uh, if somehow that slips, you want to go to, oh here, I want to slip over your, I want to slip over that arm. And so you have that kind of like mock triangle. So yeah, the head in the basket. I often describe it like, okay, we're stuffing the head in the basket because most people do this and it's centered. Yep. And then they're blocked. And that wrist is, is up. You want it concave, you want the fingers up. So, um, you know, and this is, this is like so good, the, the answer for, for so many wrestlers with good base, mm -hmm. right? They will flip themselves over because they feel like they're getting choked. So I'm here and I got that, that up. And you always want to be twisting. I can kind of lock him in here. You know, and and maybe, maybe I'm blocking it here and maybe I'm, I'm using that to sweep yes, and finish. Um, but ah, being able to, to just like pop it on, mm -hmm. just stuff it in the basket. The, uh, when, you're when you're teaching your students, I'll do it on the other side here. Uh, when you're teaching your students, it's so much of a, it's all timing, loose grip. You can, you can always do whatever it takes to tighten that up later. But just this, not centered, stuff the head in the basket to the side. Mm -hmm. like, the, like hip bump kimura, or I'm um, a guillotine kimura, hip bump guillotine kimura. And like that is probably the best nogi example of, of this, where you're, you know, you're coming up for whatever. We, we'll do both, the guillotine and the kimura. You know, we want to be here so that we don't require any hands or feet to be balanced. And then when he lifts up, so much as being able to let that go. Boom. And we're here, and then he bases. Boom. And then, and then we either go to Kimura or we're, or we're back in. But really, it's about playing this little corner right here. This little corner. Boom. That is critical, especially against really tough people. Sometimes it's too much, it's too far, it's too obvious to come up from, from a place like this or from even from low, you know, they might, they might lift you into it. Sometimes you're, you're, in this, you're in this battle and then you just need like that little bit to push them over. And then in terms of submission, I mean, that, that is one of my top against a really tough guy, beefy dude, mm. and, and they're, you know, they're, they're like freezing you out, you know, all, all the time, you know, ju just to be able to, to, to come here and then fall into it mm. is, is like a godsend, mm. you know, just that initial off, I mean, and against a really tough opponent, you're here, they lift up, 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 up. That is everything. It's an entire victory decided in like half a second, falling into it. So that Kimura, whether it's off a Kimura hip bump or a guillotine hip bump, is it's very basic, but it's really high percentage. Sure. <laughs> condition uh, that would steer you towards the, the guillotine or the... Uh, if I, it depends on the angle of my torso. So if I'm, you know, if, if, he, if he shoves me straight back, if he shows me straight back, I'm going guillotine. guillotine. Yeah, well, 
here in, in whatever in whatever configuration. Um, and if if I'm if I'm falling, if I'm already so committed, I'm I'm not gonna square up. And then I'll just drop to the elbow and go into it. Thank you.